dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Concluding the Paschal Tide, we celebrate the solemnity of Pentecost. On this day we hear, as the second reading, a text from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 25. The main theme of this letter is that a person is justified only by faith and not by performing the works of the Mosaic law. Faith is in fact a personal relationship which comes out of a personal commitment to Christ. St. Paul gives such a teaching in the first part of this letter to Galatians, that is chapters 1 to 4, which is called the doctrinal or teaching or indicative part of the letter. Then there follow chapters 5 and 6 in an exhortative form which is also called the deliberative or imperative part of the letter. In this part, verse 6 of chapter 5 is quite significant. St. Paul who teaches that a person is not justified by his or her good or virtuous deeds but only through faith which in itself is a gift of God, in the exhortative parts of his letters insists on doing good works. Then there remains the question as to why Paul goes to such a type of advice. The answer comes from Galatians 5 6. He says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. It means that the one who is justified by faith cannot but do good or virtuous deeds. He or she will necessarily do such acts of faith, acts of love. It is in this context that Paul speaks of the contrast between the works of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit, which we read in our text today, Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 25. What he said is that in our struggle against the works of the flesh, the law will not be able to help us. It will be the spirit which comes to our aid. This is in fact the message of the whole of the Pauline corpus. In the lesson that we hear today, verse 16 and verse 25 are considered to be notes that tie together to that text as a paragraph which is technically called an inclusion. Verse 16 reads thus, We live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Verse 25, which is very similar to this, reads thus, If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Both these verses speak of the living by the Spirit. To live by the Spirit is literally walk by, which is a Hebrew idiom in the sense of contact oneself. As for the Christians, to receive the Sonship is due to the Spirit. The foundation of Christian activity is also the Spirit. Our Sonship comes from the Spirit and our activity comes also from the Spirit. This is what St. Paul wants to say in these two verses. The verses which follow 17 and 18 and verse 24 go hand in hand. Verses 17 and 18 read thus, For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Similarly, verse 24 goes with these verses. It says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. What is implied is that the one who believes in Christ struggles with the spirit against the passions and desires of the flesh. Flesh is a symbol of all human opposition to God. 
When guided by the indwelling spirit, the Christian has an interior principle to counteract the flesh and is no longer confronted by the exterior norm of the law. Law merely commands from outside but does not provide the strength from within to assist one to execute what it commands. Whereas the spirit gives strength from within. Between this set of verses there come two other sets of verses. That is verses 19 to 21 a catalog of vices which are the works or deeds erga in Greek of the flesh and in contrast verses 22 and 23 a list of the fruits of the spirit we hear thus in verses 19 to 21 now the works of the flesh are obvious fornication impurity licentiousness idolatry sorcery enmities strife jealousy anger quarrels dissensions factions envy drunkenness carousing and things like this i am warning you as i want you before those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of god so the text now this list of vices even as it presents personal bad habits of people it also includes social vices such as quarrels dissensions and factions against such vices paul gives a very strong warning he says that they will not inherit the kingdom of god it's not at all right to create dissensions and factions in the church according to paul in contrast to these vices which require no further explanation as they are self evident as wrong doings Paul points to the fruits of the spirit in verses 22 and 23 The text is thus By contrast the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness generosity faithfulness gentleness and self control There is no law against such things That's the text Here in this list There stands love as the first of the fruits. In fact, it can be said that the rest of the eight fruits are a consequence of love, as love occupies the primary place. Now, although we mentioned verse 24 above, it can still be connected with the second part of verse 23, which says, "There is no law against such things." And then verse 24, and those who belong to Christ Jesus. have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires the christian crucified with christ in faith and baptism has died not only to the law but also to the flesh self to its earthbound degrading tendencies here paul is speaking in ontological terms not merely on a psychological basis It means that the union with Christ is something real and not just peripheral on the level of feelings. These fruits also have social implications. The social parameters of fruits like love, peace, patience, etc are self-evident. Dear friends, we celebrate the descent and the indwelling of the spirit as we recall the first feast of Pentecost. The presence of the church was made manifest on that day. If we want to manifest the presence of the church in today's society, we should also engage in a struggle with the deeds of the flesh self, witnessing to the fruits of the spirit. Yet we cannot do that by our own strength and effort. The spirit himself should help us. and enable us to do that on the first pentecost day the holy spirit descended on the apostles on our lady on the women and on the brothers of jesus 
as per Acts 1.14. They experience the joy of the indwelling spirit. Our prayer then today is that the spirit descend and dwell with us so that the experience be personal and social and that the fruits of the spirit be manifested as it is the aftermath of love. Amen.